Hello, everyone. It is a great pleasure that we have today to introduce Dr. Imazio from Turin, Italy, who is with us going to discuss uh, the LODOCO 2 trial, which was presented during the uh, ESC 2020 Digital Congress just shortly in a hot hotline session. Dr. Imazio, thank you very much for joining us. We are happy to see you today. Thank you for the invitation. Thank you very much. So I would first like to ask you if you could share with us your thoughts on why, uh, what is the role of colchicine in coronary artery disease? What was the rationale for the LODOCO2 trial? Okay, thank you. I will uh, share with you one uh, slide uh, just to see the mechanism of action. So we learned a lot uh, regarding uh, um, colchicine in uh, the treatment of patients with pericarditis, that is probably the most well-known indication in cardiovascular medicine for this drug. So what we know is that uh, colchicine, uh, we, we learned about it uh, during our studies in medicine, it is a, a mitosis inhibitor because it interferes with the, the tubulin polymerization, as you can see in this slide. So it is a, a cause of tubulin disruption, also inhibition of microtubule polymerization. And microtubule are a part of the cytoskeleton of, of uh, inflammatory cells. They are very important for their function. So we can see here a neutrophil. Uh, the, dr the drug is able to concentrate in the cell, even if you use it at very low doses, such as in uh, 0.5 milligram that is proposed in Glaudoco, but also in pericarditis. So these doses seem almost idiopathic, but they work because the drug is able to concentrate and interfering with microtubule function, uh, the drug is able to uh, interfere with several functions of, of the cell. So migration, phagocytosis, degranulation, and so on. So this is an anti-inflammatory action that is useful, uh, for instance, in pericarditis, but could be useful in other conditions, maybe it, it also in atrial fibrillation, post-operative atrial fibrillation, post-ablation atrial fibrillation, something like this. And now also for atherosclerotic plaque rupture could be a possible uh, useful mechanism. The other important uh, action that is uh, also relevant to us is that the interference with the microtubule function is able to inhibit the uh, assembly of the inflammasome. The inflammasome is a complex of cytosolic proteins that when activated uh, is responsible for the generation of active pro-inflammatory cytokine. Probably the most important is interleukin-1, but not the only one. You can see interleukin-18 uh, and probably also other. So the non-specific inhibition of the inflammasome is another important mechanism of action of the drug. And if you remember the CANTOS, in the CANTOS, interleukin-1 beta was targeted. So it is the final product of the activation of the inflammasome. But here we are able to interfere also, although in a non-specific way, at the beginning of the cascade. So this explains why conquisin could be used, also useful and can be used also together with an anti interleukin one agent because they are working in the same uh, mechanism of action, but colchicine is at the beginning of the activation of the cytokine. And this is probably the mechanism of action of the drug that could explain the, also its efficacy in uh, uh, coronary syndromes. Thank you very much. And uh, could you also tell us about the LODOCO-1 trial, which preceded this LODOCO-2 trial that was presented this year at the ESC Congress? Yes, thank you for the question. It is an important uh, historical consideration because um, based on the experience uh, of uh, on the use of colchicine on other uh, diseases, but but also uh, experimental evidence that uh, low-dose colchicine was able to reduce uh, C-reactive protein. The authors planned this trial. The, 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 um, the LODOCO, the good idea of the trial is that they used low-dose colchicine. It is no more than 0 0.5 milligram per day. And essentially they, uh, the, the trial was not completely blinded because it was an observer-blinded study, uh, no placebo control. So, um, more than 500 patients with stable coronary disease were assigned to colchicine or no treatment. And they were in optimal medical treatment, as you can see some data regarding antiplatelet agents and statins. And the uh, primary outcome was a combined uh, outcome, uh, combining acute coronary syndrome occurrence, out of hospital cardiac arrest, and non-cardioembolic ischemic stroke. And it was impressive to see that colchicine was able to reduce this combined primary outcome 
by about 30%. That is quite impressive. And of note, because it will recur later, about 10% of patients had gastrointestinal intolerance, so we're not able to, to tolerate the drug. This is also my experience in pericarditis. We have the same uh, um, frequency of patients that would not tolerate the drug. Thank you very much for this introduction. So uh, the question now uh, is also, just to sum up what you just said, is that uh, colchicine seems to make sense as an anti-inflammatory, non-specific anti-inflammatory drug uh, to be tested in coronary artery disease. Now the Lodoco-1 trial, uh, actually a relatively small trial, including something like 500 patients, had been done already years back, and now we have the LODOCO2 trial. Could you tell us more about the design of the LODOCO2 trial and the main results? Yes, so that the design is stronger because now we have a double-blind placebo-controlled randomized trial with uh, a greater sample because we have 10 times the patients were included in the LODOCO1. So you can see more than 5,000 uh, uh, patients were randomized. And uh, the setting is the same. The patient with stable uh, coronary artery disease, the intervention is the same, low dose. And this is very important. This is also what we learned in pericarditis. We don't, use, we don't have to use high doses because we can increase only the, side, the possible uh, gastrointestinal side effects. Another important point, no loading. So no loading dose for this patient, only this dose. And what the, the authors also uh, uh, at the wise decision to have a 30-day running period of colchicine because in that way they excluded those that were intolerant to the drug and you can see that 90 percent about were tolerant but again 10 percent of our patient in clinical practice probably would not be able to tolerate this drug this is an important point for clinical practice the primary point is, is similar but cardiovascular death nuclear infarction ischemic stroke is ischemia driving coronary revascularization with very similar results. These result, this replicate the results of the Rodoco one. What is important is also the, um, all the uh, components of this uh, combined uh, primary endpoint, but mortality, uh, were significant. So colchicine was able really to reduce myocardial infarction incidence, ischemic stroke incidence, ischemia driving coronary vascularization. And this is quite impressive and important. Thank you very much. This is so a positive trial. So we do have a positive trial now in, in chronic coronary artery disease, which I think is, is significant. So uh, my question to you first was, uh, what, do you what do you see as clinical implications of, of these trial results, of this positive uh, LODOCO2 trial? First, in terms of the side effects, because uh, colchicine may be uh, an old drug, which has been used in different cardiovascular diseases, but for us interventionalists, this could be a new drug uh, after, after the positive results of the COLCO trial, now the LODOCO2 trial as well. So uh, what would you uh, tell us as interventional cardiologists, what should we uh, look for or sh what should we be careful of when, uh, when applying the colchicine drug? Okay, thank you for the question. So these are my key points from the, from the, from the trial. So I think overall this is a well-designed large uh, randomized trial providing uh, more convincing evidence that is, uh, the drug is efficacious and safe for secondary prevention in the patient with the chronic coronary syndrome. But I would add if tolerated. So in clinical practice, we should bear in mind that even if we use a low dose, even if we avoid a loading dose, um, about 10% of our patients will not be able to tolerate the drug. And so in any case, so it is important to use low doses. It is important to uh, avoid the, the loading dose and to remember uh, gastrointestinal side effects. So. Uh, other side effects, uh, this is my experience in patients with pericarditis, so we have treated a lot of patients. And uh, so uh, the first point is uh, the interaction. So in a patient with a, um, a chronic coronary syndrome, we expect that this patient will be on treatment with statins. So this interaction is potential uh, in, uh, in the, because both the drugs can have hepatotoxicity and myotoxicity. So my suggestion is to test transaminases and CK regularly. In my experience, for patients with pericarditis, if you have a side effects, generally the side effects occur in the first month. So I think you start with the, fir with the, with the first testing, then after one month, you test again, CK transaminases. 
And if you have any changes in clinical, uh, uh, in, in the dosing of the statins or other drugs that could interfere, you should consider to retest this, uh, this exam. So in, uh, with the, the use of low dose, we expect that about four patient, four percent of our patient will have an elevation of transaminases. And uh, um, this is a side effect to, be, to remember. Another one is less than one person of our patient had a reduction of white blood cell. So testing of white blood cell during the, the, the treatment, if, if it's a, it is a, a long-term treatment, should be considered. So um, the other important question is that if a pa the patient has a normal renal function, not severe reduced renal function, so we don't, we don't uh, we, we, be, we can be confident that the drug will be well tolerated. But if we have a severely uh, reduced renal function and we have potential interacting drugs, we should be aware that we, we have to test the, 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 this blood test. Um, the, the, we, the puzzle is complete if we consider also the result of the Colcott, because also in the Colcott, the drug was tested with a similar dosing, low dose, and uh, in, uh, but in the setting of an acute coronary syndrome, and if you have seen in this uh, uh, European Congress of Cardiologists, there are some sub studies that were presented that the earlier the treatment within the three days, the better is the outcome. So it's possible that here we have a different mechanism of action, maybe linked with reperfusion or something like this. I don't know. But again, the, this drug could be potentially useful. So I think that we should start thinking that probably this is an, a drug that should be considered to be added on top of standard anti-inflammatory therapy and that could provide our patient a, a more substantial benefit, an added benefit, and can contribute to the reduction of the residual risk for the, the year. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for your presentation. Just uh, one more um, point that I wanted to ask you about the clinical implications. Namely, uh, we as interventionalists are fully aware of the Colcott trial, which was conducted in patients post ACS within 30 days of an ACS. And I think it is worth mentioning that in this LODOCO2 trial, a great majority, approximately 85% of all patients had a history of a prior ACS. For most of them, around 60% of them, uh, the ACS took place more than two years before being uh, enrolled into the LODOCO2 trial. Nevertheless, uh, we know that uh, the specter of uh, chronic coronary syndromes is sometimes heterogeneous, so that uh, these results, colchicin, uh, the good results, the benefits that we have seen with colchicin, may be mainly applied to patients with chronic coronary syndromes who had had a history of ACS. This may be a point worth pursuing in the future. I don't know what you think about that. No, I agree with your point. It's very important. Uh, probably is, is not a low risk, really a low risk population, maybe a, pop, a population of intermediate or to risk. So um, this should be made in mind. Of course, we should have also uh, add more data regarding the safety on, on long-term treatment with this drug, because of course, in, in, in patients with pericarditis, we use colchicine for one year, maybe two years, uh, even uh, six months. So for a shorter time. So we should be very sure that the drug is safe also in the long term. Regarding the risk of, of infection, you have seen that if the drug is tolerated, if we eliminate this 10 person of patients that are not able to tolerate the drug because of gastrointestinal symptoms, the, the, the rate of infection is similar in the placebo and, 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 and colchicine group. So this is reassuring, but we need additional data. And this is important for us as well, because in the COCO trial, if you remember, there was a significant difference between the rates of pneumonia, I think 0.9 yes. and 0.3. So it was below 1% overall, but nevertheless, a significant rate of more pneumonia in the colchicine CMR. Here, this finding was not replicated, which is, I think, important and reassuring for us. Yeah, sure. Dr. Imazio, thank you very much uh, for this interview. We are very thankful to you, and we hope that um, our viewers will enjoy. Thank you very much, and we will talk again. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye.